What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Robinson Motorsports. This is your first time here. You like talking about riding and working on motorcycles? Hit that subscribe button because I got a lot of cool content. I've been using this Lynx R fairing from Britannia Composites for about a year and a half now. And I want to get it off, I want to get the weight off of my bars and I want to try solid mounting it. I've looked at Yankros and things like, and uh, what's Rocky Mountains got one? What's that? Safari. But the problem with that is, is there's either a six gallon or the well the six point six or bigger fuel tanks that you that those bolt onto and meet up to. Well, I'm just commuting, and a five point three Atrevis or Acerbis, however the hell you want to pronounce it, is big enough for me. I can get about 210 miles, I think, out of it. So that's more than enough for me for commuting and just bombing around some of the roads around here. So I want to take this Lynx fairing and try to solid mount it right to the frame. My brother's a machinist and he helped me out after a bunch of sketches and we came up with this. Pretty much this is the raw, most rough edition of it, but it's a starting point to see if this is actually going to work. And I also picked up some flat, some angle, eighth inch angle, uh, three quarter inch and one inch, and some three quarter inch flat stock that's eighth inch thick. And I'm going to see if I can concoct something here to move this dash. We're going to get rid of this dash. And we're going to move this entire thing maybe forward an inch and maybe up about an inch. I know I'm going to have to trim all of this off right here which is kind of the the part that you cringe just a little bit when you thought about it because I paid probably 750 bucks for this thing. But I've already contacted Britannia and I can get one of these shells for 220 bucks. Yes, I could copy it, but 220 bucks is definitely worth the risk, I think in my eyes to try to get this thing solid mounted. So, grab a beer and uh enjoy. <laughs> First step in this entire process is I have to get the tank, the seat, my luggage off to get the seat off, and I gotta pull this dash off of it because that is one of the mounting points. Right up here is where we're going on this way. This this is where the top mounts, and this bracket right here is where the bottom mounts. So we're gonna take the bars off, and because this mounts right here on the Right here is where it goes. Take the bars off. We'll take the dash off. I already measured from here to my instrument cluster, which is from Highway Dirt Bikes, and it's five inches. So once I get the dash off, I have five inches to play with right in here to see down in there to see how this is all gonna work once I get those plates mounted onto the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Got the seat, the tank off, my luggage is off, Next thing I got to do is I'm going to take my ram mount off here, but I'm going to mark my handlebars right where they are, which is with a sharpie. Just put a dot there. That's, that's about all you need. That's a, that's normally what I do. Then um, I'll take the top mounts off here, and then I will loosen those 17 millimeter nuts down here, get those down and off. And then I will loosen up the bar clamps, pull the bars off from the risers because the risers are so deep that that bolt usually ends up going up inside of it. And it's always a pain in the ass getting it back down on there. So I'm just going to take the bars, the handlebars off of the risers and put them back on when just assemble it back that way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll check back in. All right. Well, as you see, I got kind of a mess here. I totally forgot that there's a central hole right here that all the wires go through. Well, the majority of them to this whatever Suzuki wanted to do on top of the headlight. So I'm going to disconnect the headlight here, 
take these two bottom bolts off of the fairing and just get the fairing get the fairing up out of the way and then uh, deal with this piece of plastic the dash then from there I'll put the bars back on and we will start to assemble and plan out this tower all right I got this mess kind of all sorted out um, main harness kind of comes up through the frame here I'm just draping that off to the side because that's gonna end up getting mounted inside the tower somewhere and then everything from the instrument cluster and the handlebars here they're just all just going down on top of the triples here I already have one of the mounts here mounted on the frame you can see there's three holes I still have to fill this hole in this one isn't threaded on this side but it's threaded on the other side so I'll just put a bolt all the way through it I think I might just put a bolt all the way through these as well but these are where the factory um, like fuel tank fairing went they're just M6 holes threaded so I figured those were the two good ones because the Yencro mounts there as well and then up here well here I'll show you on this side this is where that factory tank shroud fairing thing mounted you can see this one's threaded here for a clamp I don't have in but the other one I'll get mounted up here and then I'll put the fairing back on and try to connect these holes here with the inside of the fairing right there the light mount so once I get all that in I will check back all right I got both mounts fitted here I got a bolt between them kind of squeezing them together because I don't have that through bolt in the middle and what that's doing is with these spacers in here that I showed you earlier the both the mounts are going to be clamping on the side of this tube I'm going to put a little piece of um, like that 3M sticky rubber stuff just in there to prevent it from super chafing and whatnot and to take up a little bit of that vibration between the two so both of these are parallel they come just about out to if you look straight down here I have to bolt to the inside of them I can't bolt to the outside because we're gonna hit the fork tubes unless I put a weld to stop in there which I don't want to do I want to keep as much turning radius as I can so hopefully hopefully that doesn't come and bite me in the ass later when I go to mount the fairing itself and have the handguards hit it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the mask on here with the bar straight put the mask on measure from the bottom hole here to the bottom of to here somewhere wherever it mounts that seems to be fairly level top and bottom and then I'm going to take it off turn the bars measure from there out to the mask because it can't mount here anymore it's got to float there in midair and see if I'm going to be hitting anything so it looks like I'm going to have to go about four four and a half inches away from there so then it doesn't hit the handguards up here and maybe an inch up but it seems like there's a pocket there on top of the fairing that's going to actually work pretty good so let's see what that looks like um like another inch away right here and an inch up It's really not that much of a change, actually. Could probably go a little bit higher. All right, basically what I just did was I put the fairing on, set five inches from my uh, instrument cluster here to the top of it, and checked to see if this plane right here was level. And it actually was within, I'd say, a quarter of an inch. But that's good enough for me because 
You can see this hella here with the cyclopsis in it for my low beam is definitely adjustable and my squadron is adjustable up top. So I'm happy with keeping that level with the bike on the stand the way that it is for the rest of the project because it's going to make things so much easier. Making sure this is level and at the right height. I know that this has to be, the bottom of this has to be four and a half to five inches away here on somewhat of a horizontal plane. So that's probably going to be the first step is I'm just going to try to see how I can connect these, this to basically these. And I think I'm just going to end up measuring, cutting, putting holes in, and then I'll get back to you with what I come up with. All right, I thought I'd stop and show you guys this, what I have so far. Um, mounted some angle up here to well, bolt of these two together. Got it the same distance in between the two. I was actually going to go with this angle up to the um, light mount here, up to this frame up in here. But I just realized that, hey, why don't I just cut another piece of angle and put two bolts through it and use this original mounting point. So that means no modification or no cutting of this fairing, which is awesome. And if you see here, I can turn, I clear everything. I just barely clear it up here. And uh, that's pretty much where it's going to sit. A little bit higher. I was thinking of maybe putting a... Uh, cornering light in here or like two pods off of each side but uh I'm gonna keep chugging along here and see if I can't get something from this hole here up to this upper mounting point that's that's gonna be the next one because these two holes are for the light itself I gotta get something up there then I can make um like a dash panel here maybe drop it down put a dash there so I gotta figure out how to connect this up to here and also some type of support so these don't pivot here. I'm I'm eventually just gonna get it all welded. Uh, my brother's got an aluminum welder. Or, so I'll be able to take it over there and just kinda tack it together. This is gonna be like a version 1.0. Uh, 2.0 is pretty much when I get all the measurements that I need using this erector set. So, uh, Keep plugging along here and I will check back in when I see something. Alright, continuing with this 3 quarter inch by 8 inch angle. I um, I took the scraps right here from what I cut off of this down here. And cut a, uh, cut a 45, in it, 45 in it there just to kind of clean it up as a bracket. Mounted it to these two holes which were already existent for the top of this right here. These two holes, the dash. Then I measured between these two and it was within an eighth of an inch of the width in between here. In between here. So then I was like, well that's freaking perfect because then I can run two pieces of angle straight down to this top mount. From there down to the top mount and complete this pretty much triangle that I need. Now, the issue that I have now is these aren't Obviously, they're not the same mounting points here, so I need to come up with something to go from either here to the top. Well, no, here to here to support that. I need a triangle with three mount points other than these four. Over time, the weight of the fairing and everything will slowly push down or slowly pull this down, pivoting on these two bolts here. These two bolts here. So what I need to do is either go from here up to here or here to here and strengthen that a little bit uh, other than that she's pretty solid it's not it's not going anywhere right now as far as tolerances are still spot on still good there so I'm really happy with how this is coming out. I just got to kind of um, make it idiot proof. I don't think it's going to be crash proof with this version, the 1.0. I 
the 2.0 might be a little bit. I might um, use these measurements to make it out of HDPE um, or a cutting board, pretty much the same material. Or I, I'm not sure because I know aluminum is going to have a lot less vibration than the HDPE will. I just got to make this so it'll be strong enough to hold the weight of the light and it, over time it won't loosen up and come down. Yeah, I'm going to weld it, but these three points right here I want to keep bolted so then I can replace anything out this way in case I wad it up. So I'll figure something out and I will check back in. Alright, so I got the start of the triangle going right here. I'm either going to tie this to here. That way if the triangle tries to drop, we're supported right with this one. Or I'm going to tie it up here. I still don't know what I'm going to do with my dash yet. So that's kind of like the big thing in question. I got to think about that a little bit. And then I got to install the light set to see how this would tie together. But uh, I'm going to do that and then I will get back. Alright, I decided just to lop these two off right here. My dash is going to be at kind of a sharp angle. Sharper than um, the way that that comes from the factory. It's a little bit more like this. So I think I'll be happy with that. At least I'll get a lot of real estate there for switches, gauges, whatever I want. Volt meters, whatever that I want to put on there along with my GPS and possibly a phone mount. Um, I'm going to take this off now that I have it all mounted. Everything seems to fit all right. The light's in there. We're clearing back here. I can actually get in here and actually swap the light out if I need to, if it blows. Or if anything happens to it. So, I'm going to take this off, take it over to my brother's tomorrow and uh, weld it up. All I'm going to be doing is just kind of tacking it right here, tacking it up here, tacking it down here. I'm not going to tack it to these mounts because they're kind of, um, well, my brother made these for me and I don't want to, I want to be able to use those again if I don't go with this whole setup. But I want to make this setup a little bit more rigid than it is and fix it in place. Then I can go ahead and work on the wiring and the dash. So pretty much done with it for tonight if you like this subscribe there's gonna be a cool build um, I'll probably post another video next week with the wiring I'm gonna be on this for a little bit until it's done and then um, we'll go from there so I will see you on the next one